Hi students, welcome to Bio 100 Online. I'm very excited to be teaching this class. My name is Dr. Jensen. Um, I'll be your teacher behind the scenes. Hopefully we get to see each other in office hours. Um, but I want to go through with you the structure of the course so you're familiar with how to succeed. Um, and I'll post this on Canvas and I'll send it out by email. Um, and then again, like I said, hopefully come visit me if you're on campus um, or come to Adobe Connect office hours so we can meet. All right, so here's the basic structure of the course. I'm going to get rid of my face so you don't see me the whole time while I'm talking so I can show you pictures. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is the reason behind why we teach the course the way we do. So just for a second, I want you to imagine yourself writing in a mirror. And here's a picture. You can see that this person has written their mirror so it appears correctly, or written their name so it appears correctly in the mirror. Um, if you have a minute, to do this with a little uh, makeup compact or even in your bathroom mirror, I want you to pause this video and just go try writing your name so that it appears correctly in a mirror. And you will find that it is amazingly difficult to do. So pause this and try that. Okay, so hopefully you can see that that's really difficult. So the question is, why is that so difficult? I mean, we've been writing since kindergarten. Why is it so difficult to try to do it in a mirror? Well, most of you probably realize that we sort of have been trained to do it one way and then when you do it in a mirror everything is backwards and everything goes the wrong way and the question is what if I had put up this slide first and told you that really to properly write in a mirror you need to realize that vertical positions are opposite but horizontal positions are consistent so to write your name if my name is Jamie then my name would appear as it does there in the mirror do you think this would have made it any easier and you might be thinking oh huh maybe I guarantee you if you went and tried it again right now, knowing this information, it would be just as hard. So why in the world can we not learn how to um, change our behavior so that we can do it correctly the first time in the mirror? Well, it's not because you don't believe me. It's not because you don't listen or read. It's because our brains are very particular about the way that they accommodate and assimilate information. So I'm going to show you these two things. This is based on equilibration theory. So to learn information, you have to do one of two things. So number one is assimilate. So this is where you incorporate new information into your brain that you've never ever seen before. So how many of you think you've never learned anything about biology before? This is all going to be brand new. Hopefully nobody agreed with that statement, right? Because all of you have been outside, you've all experienced biology at some point, and you all have pre-existing um, ideas about how the world works. So the second way of learning is accommodation. This is where you have to modify those pre-existing conceptual frameworks to incorporate new information, and sometimes that new information is contradictory to what you always thought, like trees eat dirt, for instance, is a very common misconception that's wrong, and we have to replace that. So this accommodation is very much more difficult than assimilation. So assimilation was what you did when you first learned to write. It was difficult, but it wasn't impossible. Accommodation is like trying to write in a mirror. It's way more difficult, still not impossible, but way more difficult to retrain your brain to think differently. All right, and so it requires that, that difficult feeling where you're frustrated, you wanna scream at your hand because it's going the wrong direction in the mirror. Um, and that's what I want you to experience as you go through this class. And so as a consequence, we use what I call constructivism. It's the idea that you're not an empty slate just ready to be filled with knowledge. Um, you have pre-existing ideas that we need to confront and think about and replace and accommodate. All right, so it requires you to not just sit back and listen and take it all in. You need to be an active participant in the course. So in this course, we use the 5E learning cycle. We love alliterations in education. Um, and so this is basically how it's set up. And the 5E learning cycle says that the first thing we should do is engage you or get your attention about the material and why it's interesting to learn. And then you're going to explore or discover the information in some way on your own. So I will give you hints and ask you questions and set it up for you. But you're going to be trying to construct that information for yourself. Um, that's followed by explain, so you will get the answers to those questions and have the information explained. Elaborate is where you apply the information into a novel situation. So research has shown that if you don't take that information and apply it somewhere else, then it becomes contextualized. So it only works in that given situation where you learned it, and we want it to be more broadly applicable. And then the last thing is to evaluate or test yourself on the information. So the way the course is set up is in two sort of parts. The content attainment part where you learn the information and the concept application part where you elaborate on it. So the content attainment is done through these lecture videos. 
So within each module, and I'll show you where this is on Canvas, but you're going to open up a module and the first thing you'll see is a lecture video or a series of short videos. So you'll watch the le lecture videos and then immediately after that you'll take a video quiz. We encourage you to take that first attempt of the quiz, closed book, closed note, just as a way of testing yourself to see how much you really got out of the videos. So you take that and then you'll see, oh gosh, I really didn't get as much as I thought out of it. You have unlimited attempts on the video quiz to get the right answer. It doesn't tell you the right answer, so you're going to have to go back and look at the lecture video and figure out what the right answer is. But you should be able to get 100% because, like I said, you've got unlimited attempts. So once you've completed that, we've designed a really cool homework assignment. And I, and I put that in quotes because it, it's, it's all online. Um, but you're going to do an assignment where you're going to elaborate on the information. You're going to apply that concept in other situations. And these can sometimes be challenging, but keep in mind that the exams look almost exactly like the homework assignments, not the lecture videos, because the exams are going to ask you to apply as well. So you really want to pay attention to these homework assignments. To help you, we've done um, a couple of things. Number one, we have created um, a helpful tutorial that's at the end of the homework assignment that sort of gets you to think about it in another way. Like if you're, you're going through it and you're thinking, I don't know how to do this, then there's a helpful tutorial at the end that you can watch and go back and try the homework again. Um, the second thing we're doing is that we are doing two attempts on the homework. So the first attempt that you make on the homework should be you and you alone. You're trying to do the homework, you watch the video tutorial, you get through it. Once you press submit, it will come up with all of the answers to the homework questions along with explanations of how we got to that answer. At this point, you get one more attempt on the homework. And this attempt, you should get 100%. So you're going to go back using the answer key that we just gave you, and you're going to redo the homework assignment. The point of this is to get you to really understand what the homework is talking about because there's a clear correlation as we found between homework grades and your exam grades. Um, the, the score on the homework will be an average of the two so it'll be 50% what you did on your own and then 50% hopefully the 100% you got the second time around. If you're still unclear about what's going on in the homework please go see a TA and they can help you. There are office hours, there are virtual office hours, I am here in person, I'm also on Adobe Connect during office hours, there's lots of ways to get help. All right, so if you look at this, the engage, the explore, and the explain happen during the lecture, lecture video. The elaborate happens during the homework assignment, and then the evaluate happens during the quiz, and then again later during unit exams. All right, so this is the basic setup of the class. You're going to repeat this process with each module and what we call a day. Um, multiple times during the week. So you might do day one, day two, and day three during any given week. Any given week there's there's anywhere from two to four-ish modules to complete depending on the material. So you'll do that over and over again and at the end you will participate in a discussion board. So you've been placed into groups in your class. You'll visit the tab that says um, the, the little link that's marked discussion and you're going to use the expected learning outcomes to create exam questions. So I'll show you on Canvas where to get to the expected learning outcomes. You're going to post three original questions that you think could be potential exam questions and then your classmates will answer your questions and then you will answer their questions. So you're going to answer everybody's questions in the week by Friday. So you post these questions by Wednesday, answer the questions by Friday. And then you might do another few uh, modules or days and do another discussion board. So the units are anywhere from one to two weeks. And then at the end of the unit, there will be a unit exam. So once you've answered the questions on Friday, then you're going to study your heart out and take the exam um, sometime before Sunday night. And that's the end of the unit. So let's say you go in and you take the unit exam, and let's say you get an 88%. And you're thinking, oh, that's not bad, but, but I could have done better. And you'd like to know what you got wrong and how you could improve. So this is where TAs come in. So the TAs will hold office hours, both virtually and in person. You can catch them either way. Um, and when you go in to see the TAs, you can also come to my virtual office hours or in-person hours. You'll go through the exam, and by going through the exam with the TA or with me, we will give you one question back. So on an exam that might only have 17 questions, getting one question back can bump your grade from an 88% to a 94%. So it's well worth your time to go do that. In addition, it'll prepare you for the final exam.
All right, so here's the whole schedule. It is posted on Canvas, and we'll show you where. Um, but this is how it would go. You would complete days one through six. Now, this first unit is a little bit odd because we're giving people time to do add and drop. So the first due date is not until after the add drop deadline. But you'll do a discussion board, then you'll take a unit exam. And then the next unit you can see is two weeks. So you'll participate in two discussion boards, and then you'll take a unit exam, and so on and so forth. And at the very end of the semester, you'll take a final exam that's comprehensive. Um, so if we look at the breakdown of these, so again, this is what you do to, prep, to prepare, to learn the material, then to apply the material. Then you'll participate in discussion boards, unit exams, and a final exam. Periodically, we have research surveys that we will give you as part of your grade. Um, these are part of our ongoing effort to improve BYU online education. Um, and then you can see how the points break down. So the majority of the points are focused on assessments, the unit exams, the final exam, the quizzes, but all the other things add up as well. So you want to make sure you're participating in the discussion boards, you're participating in the homework assignments, um, you're watching the lecture videos and taking the quizzes, etc. Um, so we're going to jump over then to uh, the internet and show you Canvas. All right, so now I want to show you where these physically are. Um, in Canvas. I'm going to go over to my internet. This is what yours will look like. Um, so this is the Canvas site. You can see that each of these, if you always go to the home page, these are all the modules. And by the way, if you're a student in my class, you should automatically have access to Canvas. Notice the website up here. It's byu.instructure.com and then your course will pop up. It'll be Bio 100 Section 12 or Section 13 and you'll just click on it your section 12. You'll click on it and this is what it will look like. And so right here I'll show you just a couple of the things. Oh by the way first I want you to click on the syllabus um, and read through it. It's gonna say everything I'm already saying in this video but in case you forget or need extra information it's all there. Grading scales, policies, all of that. Alright so going back to the home page again always click on the home page. You'll see under important information here are those expected learning outcomes I was telling you about. So if you click on this <clears throat> excuse me, you can download them, which I strongly recommend, or you can look at them right on here. So this will tell you for every day, and I'm doing quote unquote on day, because it's really up to you how long it takes you to do this, but it's sort of patterned after a face-to-face -face class, so a day would have been a class period on like a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class. Um, and so it gives you the expected learning outcomes for every single day of class all the way till the end. Okay, again, if you get stuck somewhere in the course, just always click on home. Um, the schedule of due dates, I would also whoops, I would also recommend that you click on the schedule of due dates and you download it and post it on your refrigerator. So this is that schedule I was showing you before that gives you the due dates of everything. Okay, going back to the home page. All right, the next thing under important information is um, the video access on YouTube, so the video lectures can always be accessed on Canvas, but for whatever reason a few people might have little glitches in Canvas, and so you can always access the videos on our actual YouTube channel. Here's Adobe Connect. When you click on this, it will ask you if you want to open it in a new window. You do. It will take you right to our Adobe Connect page. So this is where office hours will be held, um, and then and you can just communicate. If you have a webcam, we can see you. If not, we can just hear you. Um, but that's where you'll access office hours. Um, and then the last thing under there is the TA bios, so you can take a look at those when you have a chance. Uh, okay, so the next thing, pre-assessment. So these are part of the research. We need you to have those finished by the 20th at midnight. Uh, and these are actually, these links are going to change to in-Canvas links. Um, so they're not quite available yet, but they will be in a moment. Um, all right, so then each unit, so you can see, here's unit one. The assignments are all due by the 20th, and this is just a reminder of when you're going to post on the discussion board, um, and that's for every unit that'll have the little reminders of what the dates are. So then you're just going to do each day at your own pace, but by the deadline. So let's say I want to do day two. So I would click on day two, and here's my video lecture. So if you click on this, and by the way, the video lectures, they were designed um, by me and two of my colleagues, one at UVU and one at UNC. Um, we designed them together and we wrote scripts for these videos, but I'm a little camera shy and so, um, and a little technologically challenged. And so my two other colleagues mostly predominantly appear in the videos. As uh, so if you're wondering, who the heck is this person? He's my colleague and we wrote it together so I know exactly what's in the videos, but it's not my face. So anyway, so here's the videos. You can either copy and paste the link and watch it in YouTube, or you can watch them directly in Canvas. So Hello, students. So okay, so you're going to watch the different videos, and then at the end, 
it gives you the learning outcomes. Same learning outcomes that were posted on the, the learning outcomes site. Here's the learning outcomes you should have learned in the videos and the homework. And so then you click next and it's going to immediately ask you, did you watch the video? So you just click on take the quiz and it's just one question. Did you watch the video? Yes, I did. Okay, there's no way for us to track whether you watched it or not using YouTube, so you need to go ahead and click on that. And you'll go to the next thing. The next thing is the video quiz. So did you understand what was in the in the video? And again, we're strongly recommending you take the first attempt closed book so that you can sort of quiz yourself. So it's just a simple quiz and you answer it, blah, blah, blah. You submit the quiz. Yeah, I know, I didn't answer anything. Uh, I'm gonna fail. And that's okay, you can take the quiz again and again and again until you get 100%. All right, it tells you what you got wrong and what the right answer is, so it's really easy to go back. All right, so, um, and then when you get to the homework, here's the homework. It's also formatted as a quiz, um, but it doesn't mean it's closed book or anything. You can use all your notes, you can use the internet, and you can use a friend as long as you're being independent in your work. You can use a TA. All right, but you're gonna take the quiz. Now remember, you have one attempt. You can open and close this as many times as you want and come back to it, but don't push submit until you're totally done because once you submit it, it's done. And you'll do the same thing, take the quiz there. I'm gonna show you that. All right, and then again, go back to the home page always. It'll just keep clicking through all the modules, day three, day four, day five. But if you wanna figure out where you are in the, in the course, just go back to home. So that was day three. So you can see for every day, that's what you're going to do. You're going to watch the video, say, yes, I watched the video, take the quiz, do a homework assignment. And you'll do that all the way until the first unit exam. And it will open. It's actually open now. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll just take the exam. The exams are open book as well, but they're timed for one hour. So the idea there is that we really do want you to study and be prepared for it because you can't possibly look everything up in the one hour. So you do need to be prepared, but you can use whatever resources you have available to you, including the internet, to take these unit exams. Um, but keep in mind they are timed for one hour. All right, so I think that that is actually everything there is uh, for the structure of the course. Okay, so that's it for the course. Um, I'm really excited to have you in my class. I hope that I get to meet you in person or at least online at some point. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or to any of the TAs, um, and we'd be glad to help you out. So good luck.